Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sandra and this is my May TBR. Every single month I like to start out with my devotions and leadership book reading through Proverbs, Acts, and Hebrews. Acts I'm going to be going through for a while because my church is currently in a series on that and so I'm just kind of like reading along and reading that whatever passage is preached on or going to be preached on, I'm reading that during the week. I had started Problem of Pain by C.S. Lewis and kind of soft DNF'd it because I just was not into it, especially not at 5 a.m. And I picked up God's Got This, which is like a very short but good devotional style book. I have not been reading in multipliers and I really need to get back to that. So I think I'm gonna need to add that to my little morning routine again. Rereading Do the New You. We are actually going through chapter by chapter because there was just so much in the like study that my church had put together. So I am rereading this and will be for probably about six months, which I am not to complain. Let's about. get into 12 challenge. This one's gonna be interesting. So let me go ahead and show you. This is what the wheel picked for me. The Secret Keepers of Old Depot Grocery. And I actually bought this at the used bookstore because it was $3 and I was like, okay. I can justify that. I think that cat is the one who recommended this. If incorrect on that, I'm sorry. But I'm pretty well, sure because she's the one that recommended it. I also have on my 12 challenge in the Field of Grace by Tessa Afshar that I was supposed to read last year. So I I had it like in the back of my mind that whenever this came up on the wheel, I was gonna also in that month read in the Field of Grace. So this month it's happening. I have two 12 challenge books. I'm going to read this one and that Tessa Afshar book. Why is that hard for me to say? I don't know, but I'm going to read that this month because I need a month to double up because book miss is in December. So I need to do all 12 books in 11 months. Editing Sandra, I did not explain well that we are shifting into audiobooks. So here's what I'm planning for this month, which by the way, I have done my audiobooks and coffee shops video for April. And you guys will see that probably next. But I, the two that I have left are You Are the Girl for the Job and I think it's called U-Turn. Right now I'm leaning towards U-Turn, but I'm going to choose whatever book is kind of relating when I go to do that video towards the end of the month. Next, Blind Date with Bookmas. Blind Date with Bookmas is where I unwrap a book that I didn't get to during Bookmas last year and I try to read it in the video and then if I read it, I get to buy two new books from my Amazon wish list with my Amazon gift cards and rewards points. Basically, I unwrap a Christmas book and I read one once a month. I don't know what it'll be, but stay tuned for that. Also, if you haven't seen my blind date with Bookmas from last month, it was kind of crazy and I read two books. Check that out if you're interested. Let's get into the TBR game, my favorite part of the video and probably yours too. I play my TBR game based on what I rated the books from the previous month. So let me get my notebook and tell you what I rated everything. I had three DNA. They were Rock, Paper, Scissors by Alice Feeney, which I was really enjoying, but it had a witch element that I just don't read books like that. And it seemed like it was going to be a continuing plot line in the book. So I just looked up spoilers. I DNF to the aviator's wife for a moral reason, we'll just say. I also DNF'd the lying game. So I had three DNFs. Three DNFs means that I will roll this dice three times, whatever letter it lands on. I need to choose a book from my TBR cart that has that letter in the title. All right, let's choose these. The first letter was H. So the ones that would not be just from the word the are A Weekend at the Shore, Surviving Savannah, Summer at, F at Firefly Beach, and This Close to OK. These ones are all kind of giving summer, so I'm gonna go with this close to okay. If I can get it out, let's try to not destroy it while I pull it out of the cart. This close to okay. You will see this on my book. I'm gonna go ahead and explain that right here. So what's happening is I just went through the all but two of the books in here I either have read or DNF. So what I'm doing instead of writing the titles, I am going to write numbers on pieces of paper that will match a sticky note in the front cover of every book on my TBR card and every sticky note will have a number. So what will happen is I'll draw a number and whatever number matches the book is what I'll read. And if that number has already been chosen for whatever reason, then I just choose a different number. But this way I'm not wasting all of these papers, having to rewrite them over and over and over again, 
just for me to have already read the books. Okay, let's go ahead and talk about this. This Close to Okay is about this woman sees a guy, he's on the edge of like a bridge, I think, and she invites him to, she like starts talking to him, then invites him to coffee, and they just kind of like have this friendship and she hears his story. Dual perspective as they inch closer to the truth of what brought Emmett to the bridge's edge, as well as the hard truths Tally has been grappling with since her marriage ended. It's an uplifting, we love uplifting, cathartic story about chance encounters, hope found in unlikely, unlikely moments, and the subtle magic of human connection. That sounds so good. I know nothing about this. I've heard nobody talk about this book that I can remember, so I hope that I like it. The next letter was S. The Accidental Empress Could Work. Kind of interested in seeing what that one's about. The Gilded Years Could Work. The Forgotten Heroes Could Work. Summer of Fire Fight Could Work. Surviving Savannah Could Work. The Princess of Cartilda Could Work. Lilac Girls Could Work. I really want to get to all three of these, but I picked this one up today because I had had a little free library book sitting in my bin that I totally didn't see when I did my last little free library video. So I switched it out. I don't remember what this is about, even though I picked it up today, but I had seen it on a book, book club list. And so that's what made it stand out to me. I don't remember why I never read this author before. I know that there was a reason in the past, so I'm hopeful that this is good. I did really want to try it. They're delivering books as part of Eleanor Roosevelt's new traveling library. That sounds so fun. It's a richly rewarding novel of women's friendship, of true love, and of what happens when we reach beyond our grasp for the great beyond. What really sold me was this. There's always a way out of a situation. Might be ugly, might leave you feeling like the earth has gone and shifted under your feet, but you are never trapped. You hear me? There is always a way around. That sold me. I want to try this, so that's what I'm putting on here. I hope I like it. The last roll was the letter D. The Gilded Years could work. A Weekend at the Shore could work. And Summer Island could work. But I'm gonna go with The Five Star Weekend by Ellen Hildebrand because I have really been wanting to try this. But I loved the end papers. Oh so pretty you guys know if you saw my video two months ago i think i really enjoyed the hotel nantucket and i was in shock because i never ever ever would have thought that so i'm really excited to try this because i've heard nothing but good things about this book so i'm putting a lot of really big hardcover books on my tbr but thankfully may is a longer month so hopefully, fingers crossed, I get to all of them. I had rated a book two stars. What was the book that I rated two stars? I don't remember. Oh, The Testament by John Grisha. Um, yeah, that was not for me, unfortunately. <laughs> Watch my blog to know why. I rated that two stars. So I need to read the lowest rated fiction book on my Goodreads want to read list that I own and is on my TBR cart. And that ended up being... It's resistant and I'm so interested in this one, but what if it's not I good? I really love the cover though. It's so fun. Like I haven't even really looked at it before today, but just look at that. He has blood that holds the antidote to a drug resistant bacteria. And there's like this whole pandemic thing going on and the government basically wants to use her to help. I'm nervous. I hope that it's good. I don't think I explained it very well. I'm trying to like summarize this whole thing. I'm going to try it. And we'll see. The last two, I rated Just the Nicest Couple and Suspicious Minds, a Stranger Things novel. Both of those three stars, they were just, they were good. They were not amazing. Three stars means that I will be drawing from my TBR prompt jars. Book you saw rated four or five stars on Bookstagram. Well, I should have chosen this one for that. This would be the only one. The Turn of the Key by Ruth Ware, which got another Ruth Ware book on my TBR. I'm gonna see if this is gonna be a DNF. I've I don't heard know. mixed things about this, but I've also heard people really enjoy it. Give it four or five stars. So that's the only one that fits. That's the one that's going on. Let's choose the last prompt. Most hyped on TBR. Oh. I could choose Lilac Girls because I've heard people talk about that, but I think the most hyped would be Summer Island by Kristen Hanna. And I think part of that is because um, Destiny recently talked about this in her TBR. 
we'll call something. So I think that Summer Island is gonna happen this month. Summer Island, very happy with that. So I've got three hardcovers, three paperbacks. I think that looks good. All right, before we get into nonfiction, I need you guys to tell me if you've read any of these and if you think I'm gonna like them. I'm like excited for this, but every time I get excited, I'm like, mm, what if it's not good? I, I do want to say this. I am still reading Hello Beautiful, which you guys might have seen in my 5 a.m. reading shorts. I am not far from the end. This book is so, it's really good. It's just taking me a while to read through. It's not like engrossing. I love the way that it kind of deals almost like generational trauma slash how generations affect each other. And it's always like this theme of doing things in the way that you think is best, but may not necessarily be what's best for the people that come after you. I hope that makes sense. Um, that's what I'm really enjoying about this. Well, enjoying slash crying. <laughs> Talk all about that in the mood reading vlog that you guys will see very soon. Nonfiction Multipliers is my leadership rotation book still. Obviously, I've got a ways to go with that one. And I love that book. It's a great reread. Relationships. Scary Close. I have picked this one up, but I haven't really like been dying to reach for it. Devotionals. Already talked to you guys about that. Teacher's Toolbox is like way in my shelf and I'm not pulling it out. I have not picked it up one single time this entire year that it's been my rotation for my teaching books, but hopefully that will change at some point this I summer. I still read Gospel Centered Kids Ministry and I am getting towards the end, but I have another book that I will be getting once I finish that. I also have The Compound Effect. This is my miscellaneous nonfiction book and it's basically all about jumpstart your income your life your success i started it and made decent progress and it's really good i just have not gotten back to it because i only reach for nonfiction when i'm in the mood to so that is why my nonfiction doesn't change that often let me know in the comments which of these you're most interested to see my thoughts on and what would you have picked thank you guys so much for being here and i will talk to you all next time with my audiobooks and coffee shops video that's coming out a mood reading vlog that's coming out so stay tuned i'll talk to you all next time bye